People think of the Grand Canyon as one of the most important natural sites in the U.S. and the world as a whole. It is made up of layers of rock, each of which dates back to a different time since the Earth was made. It is called the foundation of history because it is the oldest part of Earth. Each one of their excursions, this natural beauty has never failed to pique the interest of researchers and vacationers alike. A group of knowledgeable individuals has only recently finished their investigation of the Grand Canyon. An alarming finding was made as a result of this investigation, and it has the potential to impact what we know about the ancient building. Imagine that something you have completely forgotten about for your whole life, like dinosaurs, pops up in front of your eyes. The experts are always going on quests with the globe to find out more of the secrets it hides, and there are still a lot of amazing things to find. Researchers have discovered evidence that yet another underground facility beneath the Grand Canyon's rim. Here in this video, we'll be talking about the recent terrifying discovery made at the Grand Canyon. Stay with us to the end of this video, there's a lot of information to be revealed. There is a well-kept mystery in Chicago, as many other modern cities. This city contains miles upon miles of underground passages that provide safe ways for commuters to travel from one location to another without having to brace inclement weather. Underground tube systems can be found in cities such as Los Angeles, Boston, New York, and Dallas. However, in the Grand Canyon, an entire city has been discovered underground, and it's believed that giants once inhabited this metropolis. What are your thoughts on the subject? There are countless decades of history in the Grand Canyon, and researchers are unlikely to see all of it. A portion of it is traversed on a daily basis by trekkers and adventurers who are unaware of its existence. However, what about the past that has been purposefully hidden from us? It is not necessarily hidden to protect historical sites, it's covered because it will change what we've been taught about history. History is being suppressed because of this. Is there any way that could even be possible? Is it possible that an ancient Egyptian city lies dormant beneath the Grand Canyon? Let's pick up the story where we left off. At the beginning of the 20th century, we stumbled across the entrance to a most well-known underground city of giants. The media organizations were quick to pick up on this astounding find that was made in the Grand Canyon. An article in the Gazette of Arizona on April 5, 1909 said, The Grand Canyon was the birthplace of culture, and the people who lived there were a cyclopean size. This civilization left us with some artifacts to prove its presence. While rafting down the Colorado River, G.E. Kincaid, a well-known historian with financial backing from the Smithsonian Institution, made an unexpected discovery of a massive underground citadel. Based on the report, the entryway to this strange cave existed at the end of a passage that went more than 1,600 meters beneath. The entryway to the cavern was about 450 meters below the high side of the ravine. This cavern was located in a government-protected region, and entering it resulted in a monetary penalty. Kincaid was surprised by how difficult it was to enter the cave. The entry to the cave was located above a ledge that could not be seen from the river. When I saw the chisel marks on the wall inside the entrance, I got interested. I got my gun and I went in, Kincaid stated. The design that was found gave the impression that the people who built the underground metropolis had a high level of engineering expertise. The walls of the major citadel were decorated with copper weaponry and tablets engraved with signs and characters comparable to those in Egypt. The central entrance to the underground tunnel looked like a giant camcorder, from which passageways radiate with a wheel-like radius. Another remarkable discovery was the discovery of mummified corpses within the bastion. None of the mummies discovered were taller than 2.74 meters and were all wrapped in black linen. Kincaid claimed to have used a flashlight to photograph one of them but none of the alleged photographs could be found. An additional study discovered intriguing evidence regarding the ideals of the city's likely titans more than 30 meters away from the front of the chamber that included cross-shaped plant that was tens of meters long and an idol that may have been a primary god in his religious system. He was seated in the lotus position, carrying a lily or lotus blossom in each hand, and his face, like the sculpture of the cave wall, had oriental characteristics. Even though this idol showed a passing similarity to Buddha, researchers of the era need help to establish with certainty that it was meant to symbolize that religious sect. Another topic covered in the article was the discovery of artifacts made in other regions, such as pottery and other objects bearing trademarks. This discovery could be considered historic because it represents a unique fusion of cultures, which is extremely rare in archaeological artifacts.
Kincaid and his companion, Professor S.A. Jordan, assumed the white camera they discovered on their excursion was a ritualistic crypt at the bottom of the Grand Hall, where the mummies were discovered. The enigmatic hieroglyphs that the Smithsonian Institute hopes to solve can be found on all of the urns, sidewalls above the gateways, and cuneiform tablets uncovered by the photographs, according to Kincaid's study. The etching on the tablet almost certainly refers to its inhabitants' religious practices. The mausoleum, or crypt, where the mummies were discovered is one of the tallest, with the walls slanted back at an angle of about 35 degrees. In southern Arizona, related hieroglyphs have been discovered. However, two animals can be seen among the graphic manuscripts. One of the extinct creatures was among the two seen in the pictorial writings. Each has a layer of mummies on it, each with its own hewn shell, and in the center of each is a small seat with copper mugs and broken blade fragments. The urns and mugs on the lower tiers are a primitive design. The urns on the higher shelves, on the other hand, have a more intricate structure, indicating their later stage in civilization's evolution. Some of the mummies have been covered in clay, while others have been draped in dark fabric. It is essential to note that none of the mummies that have been inspected up to this point have been children or women, because no females or children are preserved in this area. The outermost portion housed the soldiers' barracks. The cave could accommodate 50,000 people in relatively safety and comfort. According to one theory, the modern Indian tribes that can be found in Arizona descended from cave surfers or enslaved people. There is no doubt that people who had reached a high level of culture lived in this area for hundreds of years before the Christian period began. No bone fragments, skin, clothes, or bedding were found among the finds. Several chambers are barren of everything else save water containers. Due to the discovery of culinary items in a 40 by 700 foot area, this space most likely served as the primary dining hall. It is not known how old these people are. Nevertheless, it is presumed that during the winter months, they traveled south and farmed in the lowlands before heading back up north during the summer months. Historians have been wondering about the kind of cultures and people who used to reside in that city, but they haven't been successful in coming up with a satisfactory solution so far. In relation to this story, it is important to know that the Hopi Indians have a ritual that says their ancestors used to live in underground of the Grand Canyons, where the good and the bad and the person with one heart and the person with two hearts grew apart. Even though their chief, Machete, urged them to escape the underground, there was simply no route back. The chief then made the plant sprout, which pierced the roof of the underworld, where the people with one heart were, and allowed them to escape. They cultivated the land among the Red River, which is now part of Colorado, and produced wheat and corn. They also sent the letter to the Temple of the Sun, in which they asked for harmony, goodwill, and dominion for the people of one heart. That messenger never came back, but even now at dusk in Hobby Village, an elderly man of the community can be seen standing on the roofs and looking up into the sky in search of him. According to tradition, when he comes back, the land and residences that belong to their ancestors will be given back to them. There are two competing theories regarding where the Egyptians originally came from. One suggests that they evolved in Asia, while the other indicates that the region around the Upper Nile served as a radical cradle. According to this article, an Egyptologist believes that the Egyptians originated in India. Although it is possible that the observations made in the Grand Canyon will provide additional insight into human history in ancient times, the article provides very few additional facts about this discovery. Despite the fact that there are no official accounts or allusions to this mysterious underground tunnel, and the Smithsonian Institute denies its knowledge of its existence, the location of the buried and discovered underground metropolis of Giants was eventually designated as a national park. There is no doubt that Theodore Roosevelt had a deep affection for the Grand Canyon. In fact, he visited the region multiple times in order to investigate and appreciate what is now known as Lake Powell and the Grand Canyon. The Grand Canyon was first named a national monument by him in 1908, and it wasn't until 1990 that it was upgraded to the status of a national park. However, there is a strong possibility that the whole thing is an elaborate hoax perpetrated by historians simply trying to advance their careers. Treasure poaching can be compared to what happens on Black Friday, when folks are rushing around and doing everything they can to secure a decent bargain because they genuinely think they have the opportunity to get rich. Nevertheless, we have high hopes that the story is accurate, and if it is, historians have a responsibility to find additional hints and evidence so that the rest of us can come to a conclusion.
Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, let us know in the comments section. Also, at last, give the video a like. See you soon.